You know, at times in our lives, we all need a new start, a new beginning. I, I think over my life, there have been times in my life where I just needed a new beginning or a fresh start. Uh, even a short vacation can help at times uh, create for us that fresh start or that new beginning. Uh, our family and I, we, we enjoy uh, when we have the opportunity to take a long weekend and just get on the road and drive. I really enjoy uh, getting away from the normal, seeing something a little different. I enjoy taking rides out in the country and just being able to see uh, the different scenery uh, as we drive along the road. You know, I was thinking about this and pretty much all of my adult life, uh, I think not pretty much, I think all of my adult life, I've traveled up and down 225 every day. Uh, twice a day, going to work and coming home. And, you know, I, I appreciate the things that happen on 225, but it's not a pretty drive. <laughs> and and that's the, it's the drive I wake up to, and it's what I see every day. Uh, but I'm just saying, sometimes we all need a new beginning. We need a, a fresh start to see things a little bit differently, if you will. And we have been journeying through Paul's letter to the church at Colossae. We've been going through the letter of Colossians. And we, this morning, are going to be in Colossians chapter 3. And here in Colossians chapter 3, Paul, Paul shifts a little bit in the letter. And uh, the letter takes on a little bit of a different focus. We've been talking about, through our study how there were these cultural pressures facing the church. The church is faithful. The church is uh, living a faithful life. Paul is very encouraged by their faith. But there are some pressures that are uh, seeking to persuade them and pull their focus away from Christ. Uh, pressures such as observance to uh, the law. You know, certain festival days, certain foods and dietary laws. There were other pressures uh, facing the church to, to supplement the message of Christ. There was something more needed. And Paul has focused his thoughts in this letter on the importance of remaining in Christ, on the importance of remaining focused on Christ. Jesus is all sufficient, and we don't need to supplement the message of Jesus. There's nothing more there's nothing lacking in Jesus. He's all sufficient. And so here, continuing in chapter 3, if you notice verse 2, Paul's encouragement to us is to not be distracted, to put our focus on things above, to put our minds, set our minds on Christ, to not be distracted. And so in the final half of this letter, what we're going to find are some very practical examples of, of what it is to be a Christian. Very practical examples of living out our faith in Christ Jesus in the day-to-day -day lives of, of Christians. So that's where we're, we're going. What does this resurrected life in Christ, what does this new life in Christ look like from day to day and in the relationships that we have? That's where we'll, we'll, be, we'll be moving. And we're going to see what I think Paul is doing is he's challenging us as believers. He's challenging the church at Colossae to live as God's new creation, to, to be God's kingdom on this earth. And this, this type of life that we're called to in Christ is not what we left behind. It's not the things that we put aside, but the life that we live in Christ is something new. It's something different. It's a new start in Jesus as the community of God. So let's just notice here uh, the first few verses this morning as we, we kind of turn our attention to Colossians chapter 3. He says there in verses 1 and following, Since then you have been raised with Christ Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life 
uh, is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You see, we, we, be, we have become distracted, and that's what Paul's saying. We can very easily get distracted with everything else going on, all the things that seek to pull our attention and pull our focus away from Jesus. And Paul says, no, no, center, focus yourself on Christ. Focus yourself on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You have been raised with Christ. This is a new start. This is not traveling the same road every day. You've been raised with Christ. It's not doing the things that we did yesterday because now in Christ we are a new creation. There's something different now that we have been raised with Christ. Paul has taught in his letter Uh, Colossians 2 verses 1 through 5 that that all wisdom is in Christ and since all wisdom is found in Christ that we as Christians as believers we should walk in his wisdom he says in verses 6 and 7 Colossians chapter 2 as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord continue to live your lives in him in his wisdom rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Identified with Christ, being part of the family of God, we are to walk in his wisdom. As those who have been raised new with Christ, we're no longer identified. He's telling the church in Colossae this was their struggle. We're not identified through the Jewish law, verses 11 through 17 of Colossians chapter 2. Dying with Christ and being raised new in Him, we're no longer held captive to the elementary principles of the world. Colossians 2 and verse 20. And to cling to such rules. For our salvation would ultimately result in us losing the the reward that we have in Christ. Look again at Colossians 2 and notice verses 18 and 19. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Don't let them pull you away from your focus of Jesus. Don't let them disqualify you. Such a person goes into great detail about what they have seen. They're puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Notice what he says there in verse 19. They have lost connection with the head. They've lost connection with Christ. And and whom from the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews and grows as God calls it to grow. You see this false humility, this worship of the angels, self-discipline of the body. Paul says in chapter 2, it says, no, it does no good against the, the deeds of the flesh. But don't let this pull you away from your focus of Christ. Don't let these things disqualify you from the reward that we have in Christ. Because Paul says those who are teaching such things, they've lost their connection with Christ. They've lost their connection with the head who is Christ. So since all of that, Paul has gone over in chapter 1 and 2, since all of that, now... We come to chapter 3, and here there is a a pivot, there is a shift, if you will, in a narrative in the verses that we just read, because what he now says is, all right, let's take, don't get distracted by all these things, now focus on Christ, focus your attention on things above. Paul draws on these themes that he has been talking about as he moves to give us a true alternative Right? You, can, you can look at the wisdom of the world. You can set your mind on the things of, of, of the, the promises that God made through Israel. You can, you can look at all of that and you can miss Jesus. But Paul says, I want you to see Jesus. And it's not just a matter of seeing Jesus. Let me tell you what this new life in Christ is. Here's the alternative to all those things that pull us away from Christ. Notice verses, uh, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2 again. 
Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. In just these few lines, what, what Paul is teaching those at Colossae, as well as what he is sharing with us who are in Christ, if you are in Christ, you have been raised new with Christ. Those who are raised new with Christ, your lives are to be very different. Our interests, our, our minds, our ambitions, the things that we seek after, these things are to be centered on Christ. Our minds are to be shifted toward heaven, towards Jesus. And staying uh, centered on Christ, notice his words there, it's going to take effort. Keeping our minds trained, keeping our minds centered on Christ is not going to be easy. He says there, set your heart on things above. This implies keep seeking things above, keep seeking Christ. You know, sometimes we're under this, uh, uh, this false understanding that, you know, once I become a Christian, then everything's just going to be automatic. And I'm going to grow and I'm going to mature and I'm never going to struggle and I'm never going to get distracted. But that's just simply not true. Keeping our attention, keeping our focus on Christ is always going to be a challenge. No matter if we're brand new to the faith, if we've been walking with Christ for a year, or if we've been walking with Christ for 40 years, there's always going to be a challenge to shift our focus away from Christ. So you and I have to engage. We have to actively seek the things that are above. We have to act, actively set our minds on Christ. It's not going to be easy. Because there are plenty of things in our world that seek to divert our attention away from Christ. There are plenty of things in our world today that seek to draw our time so that we don't have the time to to seek the things above. It's not going to be easy. But Paul says, keep pursuing things above. Keep pursuing Jesus. It's not a once and done thing. You see, I've heard it said, and maybe it was in jest, I don't know, but we've got this impression, we've got this idea that, that we dunk somebody in a baptistry and we baptize them and we're done. That's it. They're going to heaven. We're good. They've been buried with Christ. They've been dunked in the water. That's all we need to do. But we've got to live for Christ. We've got to continue to set our minds on things above. Being buried with Christ in baptism, it's not the end. It's not the completion. It's not the thing we come to so that we're done. Being buried with Christ is the beginning. It's where we begin the journey with Christ. It's where we start the walk of faith. And so many times our approach and our attitude is, well, I've made it. No. Keep pursuing Christ. There's going to be things to pull us away, but we have to keep pursuing Christ. We realize that Jesus himself has all authority. Matthew uh, chapter 28. Uh, also as well, uh, Colossians 3 here. And our focus needs to remain on Jesus, on Him, to seek the things above. And, and our focus as Christians is not only just to seek the things above, but to make the things above a reality here on this earth. To live in a way that reflects the nature of Christ so that the things above become a reality here. And it may just start with us. It may just start with me. But I need to live the principles of Christ out in my life so that the things above become a reality here. And you may be saying, Steve, that sounds crazy. What are you talking about? Go back to Matthew chapter 6. I believe this is in my notes somewhere, but Matthew chapter 6, one of the things that we are told in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? 
on earth as it is in heaven. How's that going to happen? It's going to happen when you and I as believers begin to live the principles of heaven in our lives here on earth today. Does that make any sense? We seek the things above so that we can share the things of Christ with our neighbors in our communities as we go about our lives so it may be done on earth as it is in heaven. He continues. Sorry, I'm off. Got a little off. Colossians chapter 3. We notice in verse 3, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. As those who have been raised anew in Christ, Paul teaches us that we've died with Christ and that our lives are now hidden with Christ in God or in Him. We've put away the former practices as those who have been buried with Christ. Paul has talked about this previously, chapter 2 and verses 20 and following. He says, Since you died with Christ, to the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Why, as though you still belong to this world, do you submit to its rules? You've died to Christ. This is not your identity. Your life is now hidden in Christ with God. But here's the difficulty, right? We like to turn, return to things that are familiar. We do it all the time, and that's the difficulty. The basic principles, the elements of this world, they seem comfortable, they seem normal, they seem familiar. I don't like riding down or driving down 225 every day. But I know 225. I know where the potholes are. I know when it rains where the water collects and which lane it collects in. I know 225. It's familiar, very familiar. You know, and it's kind of comfortable because I'm so used to it. But that's what happens. Sometimes we get so comfortable with things that are familiar. Uh, you know, I can get in my car some mornings and show up at work and think, did I start my car? Because it's just familiar. And it's that familiarity that, that seeks to kind of draw us back to things that are comfortable. But we have to see in Christ we're not traveling the same roads. In Christ, we are made new. There's something new about our lives. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God. And the ordinary, the comfortable, can sometimes, can oftentimes trap us. Because we get into these comfortable patterns. Sometimes destructive choices, sometimes the, the way which we make decisions, it can always seem so very comfortable and normal. And what Jesus is saying, no, focus on me. Something different. We're going on a different road. We're not traveling the same road. And sometimes the choices, the familiarity that we have, it can trap us. It can take us right back to those very things that we have been rescued from. Comfort seldom drives change. Comfort seldom drives change. And when we're sitting in a place of comfort, it's very seldom that we're actually going to change. But when we set our minds on things above, we begin to see, you know what, the things of this earth, they're not as they're supposed to be. When we set our minds on being heaven, on being the, the, the community of Christ here in our neighborhood, in our community, then we begin to see things are very broken. Comfort seldom drives change but when we begin to see things from the perspective of the kingdom of god we begin to see how much christ needs to be present in our earth in on our in our world and on our earth paul has reminded us in colossians that that we've died to this former enslavement 
And there's no need to go back and resuscitate the things that have been put off. How many times, this is his personal testimony, how many times do I, do I want to go back to those old habits and those old patterns and the things that have been put off through Christ and I try to revive them again? They're dead. They're buried with Christ. My life is now hidden with Christ in God, but oftentimes I want to go back and I want to try to resuscitate the things that Christ has put to death. You follow what I'm saying? Have you ever done it? You may just be looking at me like that's weird. But I want to go back to those old practices because they're comfortable sometimes. And I want to, I want to try to revive them. It's not going to be easy. Keep seeking Christ in the kingdom of God because what happens a lot of times when we revive those old practices we're again enslaved to the very thing that Christ has rescued us from your life is hidden with Christ in God we have joined with Christ in his death burial and resurrection we're united with him in baptism. This is uh, Romans chapter 6, if you're not familiar with it. A beautiful passage about how our lives are connected to Christ through baptism, through this death, burial, and resurrection. He says there, Romans 6 and verses 3 and following, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, that in order, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we've been united with him in his death, uh, in the likeness of his death, we certainly will also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. You see, in Christ, we are something new. And Paul says that's where we need to focus. We need to focus on Christ. New life begins with Christ. And that new life, listen, it's not just a modification of the old life. I heard a sermon, it's been years ago, this is all bonus material if you like it, uh, and I, I, Brenda will tell you, I got so upset because I know the, the, the preacher or whoever, well, I don't even remember, he was so well-intentioned. And he talked about our new life in Christ. It's kind of like when you take a car that ha has some years on it, it's got some mileage on it, it's got some dents on it. And, and what, what, what it is, is, is Christ just kind of, he hammers out and fashions the dents. He smooths out the rust. He gives it new paint. He makes it new. And I understood what he was trying to communicate, but that's not what the gospel is communicating. You see, God doesn't just take your old life and fix it up a little bit. He doesn't just smooth out the bumps. He doesn't just plaster over the bondo, over the rust. You see, what, what Paul is talking about, what Jesus does, is he takes that old car and he smashes it into the ground. And he gives you a new one. Altogether new. It's not hammering out the dents. It's not fixing it up a little bit. No. It's taking that old life, that old car, if you will. It's buried. It's gone to the scrapyard. And Jesus says, here's something new. It's not just fixing up your life. Jesus has come so that you may have new life in him. And this new life is a new direction. It's a new road. It's a new focus. And what Paul is saying, here's our focus in this new life. It's a focus upwards. It's looking to heaven. It's looking to Christ. There's our focus. It's upwards and it's also forward. It's not backwards. It's forward to the glorious return of of Christ. When he returns, we, go back to Colossians chapter 3, will be with him. The focus is upward and forward to the return 
of Christ. Colossians 3. Paul's making a shift in the letter. He, he's talked about the things, don't get distracted by these things. Here in 3, he's saying, now let's focus on Jesus. And then what he's going to do is he's going to begin to show us what that looks like every day. A new life, it's not just following the same patterns of the past. A new life in Christ is new. And if you get one thing from today, man, I wish you would grab that. A new life in Christ is new. It's not fixing up. It's not going back. It's not hammering out the dents. It's a new life where you are hidden with Christ. And this new life is going to be focused upward and forward. Our challenge today, I think, at least as I read, the challenge for me is to live as God's new creation. That's not going to say there's not scars in the past. There's not things in the past that, 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 that we remember. You don't just get a new, you know, take out this disc and put a new disc in when you come into Christ. We still got the things that we remember from our childhood. We still have the scars. There's no doubt. There's going to be painful memories. I think Paul experienced this very thing himself. But it's understanding this. That is not my identity anymore. My identity is now hidden with Christ in God. My identity is not in my past. My identity is in Christ. And Paul says, now focus on him. And that, that's my, my thing. I want us to, to set our minds on things above. Start demonstrating what it is to live as God's kingdom here in this world where we are. It's a new start in a broken world. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you can tell I'm a little passionate about this. Maybe. I don't know. But personally... We're studying Ephesians on Sunday afternoons, but it's these texts here in Colossians and also texts in Ephesians that through the Spirit transform my life. Because like you, like so many others, my past had all kinds of problems. And I let that identify who I was. I still struggle with that. Some of the insecurity, some of the challenges that I face every day, I struggle with that. But when I began to understand who I am in Christ, it changed my whole life. And that's where Paul is trying to get us to focus. New creation. New life in Christ. Don't identify yourselves in the things of the past. The law here in Colossae, it was, it was the law. It was this teaching that, that sought to supplement the message of Christ. What Paul says, no, your identity is with Christ, hidden with him. I, I skipped right over it, but that, that thought of being hidden in Christ, that's security, that's safety. That's what he's saying. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. So here's some, some questions for us this morning to consider. What old patterns are you holding on to? What old patterns are we trying to resuscitate in our lives? Do they need to be put to death? Where do we need to let go and seek God's kingdom above? What things are identifying me? What do I need to let go and let my identity come from Christ? This morning, like I said, this is, for me, a challenging lesson because I know I've struggled with it so much of my life. But I also think it's where the joy 
in the gospel truly comes from. It's where joy is. Because our identity is in Christ. And I hope today that in some way the things that we've talked about and shared have been an encouragement to you. I hope they encourage us to set our minds on things above. To set our minds on Christ. 